welcome to another edition of Flea Market Fantasy, the world's second greatest Bronze Age era comic book podcast. Joining me as always is new Mike L. Kevin Shank. Me and my fun gunner here. <laughs> may or may not be calling. euphemism for my penis. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, today, we'll, oh wait, it's your issue, so tell the kids what we're reading today, Jay. Uh, we're going to be reading Captain America number 309 from 1985, I believe. Yes, I believe so. One of those reprints where they have like a more recent date on it, but. And why did you pick this issue? Uh, well, a couple of reasons, I guess. Uh, first, we've been doing a lot of DC lately. I figured it was time yeah. we do a Marvel book again. Way too much. So, uh, that's, that's part of it. <laughs> and, uh, also the Deadpool vs. Wolverine movie is coming out. So, uh, since Deadpool is a 90s character, um, I wanted to do something that ties in, but we couldn't do anything Deadpool related. So I figured we'd go with, uh, somebody who's, you know, Deadpool-esque over at the, uh, Marvel. Yeah. Say, who is it? Uh, Madcap. Yeah, there I'm it is. a villain named Madcap this week. Yeah. Madcap. And also this issue of Captain America features Nomad. Mm-hmm. Nomad. Everyone's favorite hero, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I knew him more as his, like, 90s grungy version than I did this yeah. version with the dor- dorky costume. Yeah, it definitely is a dorky costume. But we'll get into <laughs> yeah. Nomad's history, Madcap's. Well, we're not going to get too much into Madcap's history at the beginning because that's what this issue is. It's, it's Yeah, so <laughs> it'll we'll, recount the whole thing, so. <laughs> we'll get into that. but Because this is the <laughs> second appearance of Madcap, this year issue. Yeah, yep. I looked I at them both, and I was like, this one looks better. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, before we get into that, uh, let's remind everybody, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. We're still holding steady at 230 subscribers. Oh, well, didn't, didn't lose anybody. Didn't lose anybody. All then, right. Although the, I, I just put up the Metamorpho theme song on our channel, so I'm sure that'll bring people in when they hear that Metamorpho <laughs> theme song. That's what they come for. Copyrighted music. <laughs> no copyright strike on that. It's so old, <laughs> they don't even recognize it. So Yeah. No one bothered to scan it. They're like, no one will ever play this. <laughs> it works out. Uh, also, uh, again, if uh, you like to read books about chimps and pro wrestling, my new book, Monkey Flip, is out there. Available at oneninebooks.com, <laughs> amazon.com, everywhere you want. And just today, as we're recording this, the audio book is out there now. So, yeah, you can listen yeah, to go get the one. audio. I just yeah. got mine right before the show here. So. How about Jank supporting the team? Look at this guy. <laughs> but uh, So it's all out there. Thank you very much. All right, so Captain America issue 309 from 1985. This was written by Mark Grunwald, and the artist here is Paul Neary. Mm-hmm. He's talked about Grunwald a lot on the show. He's uh, very famous for his run on Captain America. And, uh, of course, he did Squadron Supreme, which yeah. I, I think he won a Golden Flea Award for Best Writer, right? I think so. I think he might have, yeah. yeah. Even though normally you're trashing his stuff. but Yeah, yeah. You're so he's, like a big, he's a good concept guy, I think. But, you know, the nuts and bolts line writing, maybe not <laughs> the sharpest. But, yeah, uh, yeah, dialogue could use the, uh, another pass. But his Captain America run, he did every issue from 307 to 443, except for issue 423. Oh. But otherwise, 135 issues from 1985 to 95, a 10-year run, only <laughs> one issue he didn't write. I couldn't find out why he didn't write that one issue. But, yeah, that uh, seems to happen. I think uh, like Peter David's Hulk run, he did you know probably 160 issues, and I think Bob Harris did like one for some reason. I don't know why. Well, the person who did that one issue here, Roy the Boy Thomas. Oh, oh look at that. About that. He pulled and him so, out of mothballs. <laughs> so a hell of a run from Mark <laughs> Grunwald. And the artist here is Paul Neary. Sadly, he just passed away back in February at the age of 74. And we've talked about him many times on the show as well. He's famous for inking out. I always think of him as the inker for Alan Davis. Yeah, Davis and Neary. You see those together all the time. But he was also, uh, he inked Brian Hitch on The Ultimates, I guess. he's A lot of people know right. from that. Yep. But, um, and he did the pencils or breakdowns for issues 292 to 329 and then issue 331. So we're like right in the middle of his run here on Captain America. And, uh, okay, those are the creators we're dealing with. Now let's get to the characters. You mentioned Madcap. Mm-hmm. His real name is unknown. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. 
Because there's like newspaper. I feel like that should be known. He's yeah. he's obviously <laughs> been to the hospital. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, his first appearance was Captain America 307, created by Grunwald and Neary. He has made about 55 appearances over the years, and he has crossed yeah. paths with Daredevil, She-Hulk, Power Pack, Ghost Rider, oh, and your buddy <laughs> Deadpool. Yeah, he became quite the uh, the character in Deadpool uh, in somewhat recent years. They kind of tried to make him the antagonist, the main antagonist for Deadpool for a little bit. Yeah, you love the Deadpool. So, uh, but Madcap, basically, he's a guy, we'll get into it in more details in the issue, but he uh, he can't be injured. He has a ridiculous, well, I guess he technically he can be injured, <laughs> but he heals very quickly. Yep. And he feels no pain. And he thinks life is just kind of meaningless and uh, random. So he's just basically loopy. Yeah. And, and apparently that's this whole thing is he's trying to spread that philosophy, at least at this point. <laughs> that's his, his whole gig is he wants to convince other people that life is as random as he thinks it is. And he just likes having fun and uh, goofing around and uh, making a lot of corny jokes. Yeah. And he, he dresses like a cross between like a uh, like a Harlequin and a Three Musketeer guy. Yep. <laughs> yep, that's it exactly. He's got the big floppy Very yellow hat. and pink, purple. Yeah. Very garish. Striped pantaloons. <laughs> yeah. And uh, his mask is just like a yellow mask that he pulls down. And it gives him, like, a big mouth and uh, his eyes, and that's it. I thought he would look cooler underneath that costume, but he just yeah, looks like a, a normal, dude. average Joe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just a dude. And he carries a little uh, fun gun, like you mentioned. It's just yeah. a uh, department store, like a dime store squirt gun. And yeah, it's one of those bubble guns. Yeah, he squirts bubbles out of it. Now, the bubbles, uh, there are nothing special about the bubbles. They're just bubbles. Nope. But tell the people how he what his powers are. Uh, apparently, when he when you look into his eyes, uh, he can convince you basically to go crazy as crazy as he is, kind of. And you start acting loopy and doing, you know, crazy shit. So he just uses the bubbles as like a distraction or to get them to look at his face or. Yeah. I don't know. I guess but I mean, shooting a gun at you that you automatically turn towards them, even if it's a bubble gun. <laughs> yeah. And then he yeah. hypnotizes you. And yep. you start acting goofy. So that's pretty that's cool. That's Madcap. <laughs> yeah. I guess uh the the way I know they brought the Deadpool thing into it was like somehow Deadpool, Madcap, and Thor were involved in some kind of an adventure. And uh I think Thor just got so frustrated with both of them, he like fried them with lightning <laughs> and like <laughs> disintegrated both of them. And like their their piles of dust essentially intermingled. And Deadpool regenerated, but Madcap seemingly did not, except apparently he was, like, trapped inside of Deadpool. Oh. <laughs> so there was always, like, two different colored boxes in his head of, like, voices in his head. And you're like, oh, that's just Deadpool being crazy. But apparently one of those voices was uh, Madcap trying to talk to him and trying to get out. So eventually they were separated, and Madcap yeah. was not happy about being trapped in Deadpool for so long. <laughs> so he made it his life's work to, like, destroy Deadpool at that point. <laughs> I, can, I can see why. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but otherwise, but otherwise, he has no superpowers. Like he's not super strong or anything. This man, he's just a guy. Yeah. Yeah. As we find out in this issue, if he had some, even a little bit of super strength, I think he could have gotten out of this thing. Nomad gets him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Nope. So, all right, that's uh, Madcap, and again, we'll learn more when we get into the issue. Now it brings us to Nomad, and holy hell, is this backstory weird? <laughs> yeah. I had no idea any Updated. of this. Updated. I just had a vague recollection of Nomad from the early 90s. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, like you mentioned, he got his own series. Uh, when when was yeah, that? Yeah, he had an ongoing, probably like uh, 92, 93, maybe? Yeah, he had a four-issue limited series in 1990, and then he got his own ongoing series in 1992, and that lasted 25 issues. Yeah, I have a couple of those. Um, but I have not read, but a couple of them, because like, there was a... It was like a crossover, like a nine issue crossover with like Daredevil and like Punisher War Journal and Nomad, I think. Oh, they wow. all ended up in Vegas. <laughs> like, like, mob they were and, trying hard to make Nomad as somebody, huh? Yeah. Put him with Punisher and Daredevil. Yeah. 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 I, think he, I think one of them, like Gambit, co starred in it, so I was like, I bought that one. But, <laughs> yeah, I was just buying things because other characters were in it that I liked better. Yeah, because when he got his own series, he got like long. 
hair. He almost looks like uh, uh, who who's that guy we did in that book, uh, the DC book about the fuzzy aliens. Oh, uh, Slash Maraud. Slash Maraud, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, no scarf, but yeah, yeah. totally. It's like a black leather trench coat, just super long hair. Yeah, just like that same kind you of know, feel. Five o'clock shadow at all times. Yep. So Nomad, his rural name is Jack Monroe, and technically his first appearance was Young yeah. Men, issue 24 from 1953. <laughs> and back then he was Bucky. That's yeah. right. He was Bucky, and he's created by uh, Don Rico and John Romita Sr. And then his first appearance as Nomad was in Captain America 281 in 1983, created by J.M. DeMatteis and Mike Zeck. But, the, yeah, this, I don't even know if you can count that being, his cre- being created by John Romita Sr., because didn't he just think he was drawing Bucky? <laughs> yeah, they, on that but they always... Bucky? <laughs> Yeah, it's very confusing. We'll try and explain it, but even when you expl- you hear it, you'll still be confused, but it's okay. Yeah. Uh, so the character back in the uh, 50s there, he was born in Iowa on December 7th, 1941, the day of Pearl Harbor. and uh, But his dad was a Nazi sympathizer, and oh. his hometown was full of Nazis. Yeah, that's Uh-oh. weird, huh? That's good. <laughs> and his dad was also abusive. He used to smack him around. And uh one day, Jack, uh, this poor kid who's grown up with his head worked by these filthy Nazis, he uh went to school and he brought one of his dad's Nazi armbands as, for show and tell. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I mean, if the town is full of Nazis, that's probably not that unusual. They probably wouldn't have even raised an eyebrow. Well, they're like an underground Nazi thing. Oh, okay. So the it's teachers uh, called Nazi. the cops, and the cops came in. <laughs> And, uh, you know, they're talking to Jack. Like, hey, where'd you get this Nazi armband? And he says, oh, my filthy Nazi father gave it to me. And they, <laughs> they arrested his dad and they arrested his mom and they convicted them as traitors and they were executed. Wow. <laughs> Holy crap. And they uncovered the entire <laughs> Nazi ring there in that town and they uh, rounded them all up there. So uh, Jack, he had to go to foster homes then. And somehow he ended up in New York City from Iowa to New York City. And uh, when he was there, uh, he started to become fascinated with Captain America and Bucky, reading about all their adventures during World War II, you know. And he even began calling himself Bucky. And huh. he went to this school in New York. Uh, I think it was like I think it was the Lou School or something like L E W, something like that. But he had a teacher named William Burnside. This William Burnside guy also loved Captain America. He loved him so much that he changed his name to Steve Rogers and went through extensive plastic surgery to look like Captain America. (laughs) Wait, so he did this before the government brought him in? Like, he was just doing this on his own? Yes. Again, we'll get to why this all happens. But uh, (laughs) he, uh, he even used Nazi documents to recreate the super soldier serum. (laughs) <laughs> as you do which, you which Shields has been trying to do for decades but this guy in his basement with tons of plastic surgery <laughs> practiced in a weekend uh, so you know they're just going about their lives uh, they were buddies you know he was his teacher or whatever and uh, they were just <laughs> pretending they were Captain America and Bucky but they didn't <laughs> don the outfit like he really wanted to be the next Captain America but the government said you know we're good on Captain America we don't need any more you know we had the one and that's good enough yeah so uh, that's the way it stayed oh. until one day the Red Skull attacked the uh, United Nations headquarters in New York City. Oh. And they heard about it on the radio because they, they were in their car together. He was riding with his teacher in the car. And they were they, – his as crazy as this sounds, Jack, they were actually talking about becoming Captain America seconds before uh, the teacher turned on the radio and heard about the Red Skull. Wow. Well, where are they? Yeah. I know. <laughs> so coincidence. <laughs> coincidental there but they said hey here's our chance so uh yeah they donned their outfits and they went to the united nations and they defeated the red skull look at that and it was pretty easy i gotta tell you he just threw his shield hit him in the face and that was pretty much it <laughs> like it, was, <laughs> it wasn't much of a fight <laughs> so where did he get the shield i probably made it in his basement <laughs> no it's just like a garbage can lid yeah, spray painted. yeah. uh so anyway uh yeah, they both took that secret, that super soldier serum, by the way. You know, he didn't just invent it. They He injected it into himself and into sure. the child. 
<laughs> that's, that's not good. But wow. uh, they, they defeated the Red Skull. And then the government was so impressed. They said, hey, would you like to help us out here as uh, Captain America and Bucky? And they said, sure. And they became very anti-communist and went down hunting communists throughout the 50s there mm-hmm. for a couple of years. But then that uh, that whole knockoff super soldier serum that he made in his basement, it yeah. started making them both crazy. And they became oh, that's hot. They became it paranoid. It sounded like he was playing with a full deck to begin with, with all the plastic surgery. They became paranoid schizophrenics, and uh, the government asked them to surrender, and they said, nope. So then the government <laughs> captured them, and they put them into cryogenic suspension. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The old Walt Disney. <laughs> so that entire story was a retcon. Yeah. <laughs> because in the 1950s, they were just Captain America and Buggy. That's who they were. Right? Yep. Because they were still printing Captain America comics, even though in when they brought Captain America back in Avengers number four, they had said that, oh, yeah, Captain America was seemingly killed in that plane explosion back in, you know, World War Two. So they had to explain why was there a Captain America in the 50s then? And yeah. this is the, the convoluted explanation they came up with. So in that 1950s continuity, I guess Steve Rogers just, retired from the army and became a teacher <laughs> i guess is what they're saying i don't know <laughs> huh. i have no he idea he was still frozen at that time, at that time wasn't oh he? yeah i suppose he frozen yeah. in a block of ice yeah he, th- he thought out and went to college and then uh, <laughs> but anyway yeah so they had to come up with a reason why captain america and bucky were running around in the 50s so yeah this is what they came up with and <laughs> who do you think came up with this idea Ooh, roy the boy thomas <laughs> that is exactly right roy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is needlessly elaborate. Like I get the idea of having someone else be in the costume and stuff like that. That's fine. But why, why make him do all of these things, make him a crazy person? I don't know. So the, uh, when this story, when the story got retcon, when it officially happened, it was in Captain America issue 153. That's when Jack and Bucky first popped up in those stories. Jack Slash. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Steve Englehart was the writer, but he said the idea came from Roy Thomas. It was uh, his idea. So now the reason they uh, popped up then in the 70s there um, was because a janitor who was pissed at Nixon for visiting China freed them in hopes that they could bring America back to its true glory. (laughs) (laughs) That's uh, that's (laughs) certainly one idea. And then. uh, uh, Cap and the Falcon, then the real Captain America and the Falcon defeated them and put them back into uh, cryogenic suspension. So, <laughs> and I think they broke out once or one or two other times, uh, but nice. eventually, that Jack kid, the old Bucky, he got rehabilitated and he was released back into society, and he became Captain America's new sidekick. And he took the name Nomad because Captain America used that as an alias yeah. back in issue 180 in 1974. So they brought that back. Yeah, uh, it's probably old to try to be Bucky at this point. So they're like, yeah, you'd be Nomad. So even though it seemed like Nomad, you know, his his uh, he got back his senses and everything. It seemed like that uh, Captain America, the phony one, was still crazy. And <laughs> yeah. He became someone called the Prime Director, I think. Oh. And he was a real crazy dude. <laughs> he became a villain and whatever. So, yeah. Right. That sounds about right. So, uh, yeah, old uh, Nomad teamed up with Captain America and he, he was like his new bucket, but he was a grown man now, you know. He's a. Yeah. Grown man, yeah. So. And would you I like to describe that. Nomad's original costume for the people? Uh, yeah, it's kind of just your typical superhero costume. Um, it's kind of goofy. It's got like the little, you know, blue mask that kind of covers not the hair, but just the face and his chin's fully exposed. And, uh, there's like a really deep V going into the shirt. So yeah. he's showing off a lot of his cleavage for some reason. Uh, he's got like a blue shirt and a yellow cape that has like big yellow circles on the front, kind of like Thor almost a little bit. And uh, big yellow gloves, 
uh, like a little yellow belt that kind of has, has an N built into it in the, uh, the yeah. lining there. <laughs> so weird for Nomad. And, uh, then you see, you know, blue pants and yellow boots. Yeah, I don't know if there's discs. I read some where he throws, uh, stun discs. I don't know if there's things on his chest or stun discs that he can take off and throw at people, but, uh. That makes sense, but that belt doesn't seem to have any pouches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, got in here and drawn some pouches. <laughs> But yeah, he just has super, you know, he took that super soldier serum, so he has enhanced strength and stamina and durability, but it's not as high, high quality as Captain America because it was knockoff yeah. serum. You know, so he's not like as strong. Someone made in a prison toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in, the, in this issue, spoiler alert, he decides to separate from Captain America and go off on his own. And yeah. after having his own run as a solo crime fighter, which we talked about in his uh, story, there is uh, ongoing series. Nomad was caught in an explosion that left him in a coma. And mm. Henry Peter Gyrich, remember that guy who was always trying to screw over the Avengers? Uh, <laughs> he, re- he revived Nomad and he reprogrammed him mentally there to become the new Scourge and to yeah. eliminate the Thunderbolts. Do you remember this? Did you read this? I do. Yep, I sure do. All right. Well, tell us more about this because. Because I just read that a, a mysterious third party was controlling Gyrich, but I never read who that per- party was. Do you happen to know? Yeah, I don't know who that was. Uh, uh, I don't think I made it that far into the series. All right. <laughs> <laughs> For all I know, it could have been Baron Zemo, who yeah. at that point was probably trying to get revenge on the team because they had betrayed him. <laughs> but like, so the new Scourge, he was just sent. I, I I think he killed two of the Thunderbolts, right? Maybe. Uh. It, I, I don't know. Maybe charcoal. I don't. I don't think he lasted too long. <laughs> I just read that he eliminated two people, and I I can't remember their names. But um, I mean, I took a know look. that the original scourge got Turner D. Century, so this guy yeah. already took out <laughs> be as successful. That was a real loss. But I guess at the end of that storyline, he just disappeared. Like he came back to who he was, and he uh, just drifted off, and no one knew where he went. And after that, he spent like a, the next year boozing it up. And then he just started slipping into madness due to that corrupt super soldier serum. Yep. And do you know how he died? Yeah, he was taken out by the Winter Soldier, I believe, when he yep. was in the first storyline, when they kind of show the, the Bucky is still alive. Yeah, they show that he kills Jack Monroe. Yeah, Captain America, Volume 5, Number 3, 2005. Apparently, the Winter Soldier wanted to uh, frame Jack as a uh, use him as a scapegoat for a terrorist attack. He's going to commit in Philadelphia. So he like shot him and killed him and stuffed him in the trunk of his car and like drove him to Philadelphia or something. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, so that's the backstory there of Nomad. And uh, yeah, very colorful. A, I think he stayed dead since then. No one's been like, hey, we need to bring back Nomad. Yeah, yeah we're good without Nomad. <laughs> we're good. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, so that's all the backstory we have for this issue. Uh, how about the cover there, Jack? Would you like to describe it for the people? Uh, yeah, it's not the best cover. I'll, I'll say that. Not one of my. It's favorites. weird. It's definitely weird. Yeah. Uh, so we got the little corner box with Captain America running with a shield. He's he's looking happy there, so that's nice. Uh, with Captain America logo. For some reason, it's like black letters with like a green shadowy outline. Which yeah, is I don't get this. It, it, Captain America's title should always be red, white, and blue. That's just what it should always be. Why is it black and green? I mean, it seems like they're setting up for the Serpent Society, so maybe do that, that, but not in this issue. Like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. (laughs) Uh, So then there's a shot of, like, a roller coaster track, and uh, Madcap and Nomad are fighting on top of it. Uh, Madcap is holding on to the... Uh, the, the roller coaster track with a very large arm, and he's kind of <laughs> kicking Nomad in the face, knocking him off, sending him flying. And we have like a superimposed, like, ghostly image of Cap down in the bottom, uh, looking shocked and be like, oh no, Nomad. And, uh, then it says, Mad Cap returns, and it means Nomad's last case at Cap's side. Uh oh, is he gonna die? Spoiler, yeah, he does. Certainly a weird uh, decision to make that superimposed Captain America yeah. face. Kind of weird. <laughs> Not a fan. He's doing commentary for it. Yeah. <laughs> Reaction channel. Yeah, so not the best cover. So uh, we open it up, though, 
and we have a splash page at an amusement park, and we see some uh, thugs, the cruisers. Yeah. They're thugs. hiding. <laughs> like middle-aged thugs. And they're hiding uh, behind a garbage can and peeking around a corner, and they see Madcap prancing down the street, and <laughs> Madcap's just singing, life is like a rotten egg, it stinks and stinks and stinks. And But if you look at the metamorphic theme song. Yeah. <laughs> if you look in the background behind him there, Janky, uh, that's how they do the credits for the issue, like graffiti on the wall there. And yeah. look at who did the inks. Oh, Janky. <laughs> <laughs> I like Maybe this guy's <laughs> Your Dutch cousin. <laughs> so, I can only hope. <laughs> that's pretty good. And I like that at the bottom there, no mad madcap cap. <laughs> like the way they it. And it's pretty that's cool. A good title. Yeah. yeah. No no mad at the top, and the no is in white, the mad is in yellow, and then beneath it, right beneath that mad is another yellow mad, and then like a, an orangish cap, and then beneath the orangish cap is another cap. <laughs> so it's pretty cool that all their names <laughs> line up like that. No mad, mad cap cap. Yep. And apparently with no mad leaving, this is the last time they could do that. So they really <laughs> capitalized on it while well, they could. So, all right, Jank, these toughs are, uh, they, they don't want uh, mad cap on their turf, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and okay, what happens? Happy to hear this? We're a tough biker gang. <laughs> uh, so they're like, enough yakking with them. Let's stomp the creep. <laughs> and, uh, one of them gets out one of those little tiny, what do they call those things? Uh, you can be called a sap or a blackjack. Yeah. yeah, blackjack. That's it. Yeah, he kind of whacks him in the face with it, and uh, Madcap just laughs it off. Hoo ha! Are we having fun yet? And he's like, "Oh, tough guy." How so they grab his arms and they start just beating him in the chest, and uh, it ain't doing anything. It's not doing a dang thing. So uh, one of them gets out a, a stiletto. Now he's gonna stab him right in the gut, and uh, he stabs him. And uh, yep, didn't do anything. <laughs> Like, oh, no, he's one of them super dupers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> they still talk like a 50s gang, apparently. <laughs> well, they have, they have like, uh, greaser haircuts and everything, too. Yeah. Yeah. Pinky Tusked Arrow is going to show up any second. <laughs> but uh, Matt Cap just rips the knife out of his belly and throws it at the guy and hits him in the arm. <clears throat> and, and he's laughing the whole time and stuff. And then he takes out yeah. his fun gun, shoots him with the bubbles. And they all start acting crazy behind him. And then he just walks away. I think the one guy says, does whatever a spider can as he's climbing the wall. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> so then Madcap goes back to his apartment. And uh, it's kind of weird because from the outside, it looks like a basement apartment. And then when he opens the door, it looks like a wooden clubhouse. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand what's yeah. happening. Yeah. I mean, if he's at the carnival, this is probably just like some carny shack probably but he opens up the door and uh oh we see there's a horseshoe on the wall and it's upside down so that's a bad sign no the luck's gonna run out and then there's a picture of somebody above the horseshoe who's that guy yeah <laughs> maybe that's the carny that lives here or something because yeah that's not him uh, but madcap normal. goes in and we and someone says come in madcap i've been expecting you but we don't see who it is and he says huh yeah. <laughs> so, some steamy Steve Rogers action now. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> fill us in on this hot, hot Steve a Rogers action. <laughs> uh, so he's getting back from, I think, Europe. Uh, he's been out Captain America up the place. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I guess he's been in England. And, uh, so his girlfriend, <laughs> uh, whose name I don't remember because I Bernie? don't think I've ever seen this lady. <laughs> well, <laughs> neither had I. I don't. I didn't remember her, but uh, Bernie Rosenthal is her name. And wait, I did some more research on her. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to find it here in my notes. First appearance was Captain America 247, 1980, created by Roger Stern and John Byrne. She was uh, actually engaged to Steve Rogers at one point. Holy hell. She was rena she was a renowned glass blower. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, she mentioned that here. <laughs> they raised the rent, so she had to close shop. That's right. So we're right at the end of her run here because uh, when she had to close shop there, she decided to leave New York to go to law school in Wisconsin. And uh, but thankfully, she and Steve remained friends. And she huh. was the attorney for the Winter Soldier uh, for Bucky Barnes there when he got in all this legal trouble. And, oh, OK. I probably read that story and had never put that together. 
But here's the the other uh, note that I loved about her. This was a trivia note on her bio. She's a big professional wrestling fan. <laughs> oh, so you're in. <laughs> That's the last awesome. blower and professional wrestling fan. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah. So. That's quite the leap to be like, oh, I'm going to give up the glass blowing and become a <laughs> lawyer now. Yes. <laughs> Doesn't seem like those two overlap. No. Maybe uh, like a counselor or something, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Lawyers? You know, go to the rent fair. They always have glass blowers. <laughs> if you can't afford the rent at the little shop. <laughs> she had to be a hell of a glass blower to be affording rent in New York. <laughs> you know, like for, yeah. Holy hell. It must have been really good. <laughs> Uh, all right, so yeah, Bernie Rosenthal is uh, this lady's name. All right, so continue, Jake. Okay, so, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Steve Rogers realizes, oh, I was supposed to finish this toothpaste ad that I was working on for the agency, <laughs> like, last Friday, and I, I was too busy being Captain America. I was like, I better call my boss. He's going to be real mad. And uh, he calls the boss, and he's, yeah, he's pretty mad. <laughs> he like, calls him on a Saturday <laughs> night at home. Yeah. <laughs> Bernie's like, like don't call him. It's, it's Saturday. Don't call him. He's like, no, I better call him at home right now. He's going to want to hear from me. He did not want to hear from him. Yeah, he no. <laughs> he was like, yeah, sorry, boss. I was out on personal business. Uh, it was unexpected. You're like, business? What business? Your business is my business. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I gave the job to somebody else. We'll talk on Monday. Uh, now, Jank, when you're out uh, being a superhero across this yeah. world, do you ever just skip out on work for like a week? I always find time to get those numbers crunched. <laughs> yeah, for, well, yeah. For those who don't remember, uh, Steve Rogers was a advertising uh, illustrator and like uh, ad campaign. He could have fit right in with Mad Men, Don Draper, and all that. Yeah, apparently he's like the yeah the Don Draper of the art department. It sounds like because he's really good, <laughs> even though he's unreliable, <laughs> just like Don Draper. <laughs> <laughs> well, Don Draper is you know. Getting boozed up and chasing skirts. Steve Rogers is out saving the world. You know? Yeah. It's so. true. A little different. <laughs> but then uh, Bernie, uh, well, he asked if uh, Bernie has seen Jack lately, old Jack Monroe. And she says, nope, I haven't seen him. She shows him a newspaper, and there's like a headline about uh, what it riot on Broadway. And there's a picture of Madcap there. And uh, I guess uh, she says Jack was, you know, hustling with this guy or something. Yeah. Steve Rogers is like, I better go, uh, go see how Jack's doing, you know, cause I've been away from my girlfriend for over a week. What I want to do is see what Jack's doing. And, <laughs> and what does Bernie say to him? Now, just a cotton picking minute, Steve, no man's a grown man. You can't big brother him his whole life. You taught him to be able to take care of himself. Didn't you? When are you going to give him a chance to prove it? Besides, you just got back from saving the world twice over. Can't you give it a rest for a night? I know somebody who could use a hero all to herself for a while. <laughs> I guess you're right. <laughs> now get set for some serious smooching, hero man. You talked me into it, lady. <laughs> it's an <laughs> some serious smooching. <laughs> <laughs> They're but definitely they going to suck your face. <laughs> they cut away before we see him with clumsily try to remove her bra. And now we go back to Coney Island and Madcap is in his little shack there. And who's sitting there in a chair like he's frozen? <laughs> yeah, no man. Just making himself in a very uncomfortable home, apparently. Yeah, sitting there awkwardly. And uh, he's like, hey, you remember me, Madcap, a few days ago on Broadway? We tussled a bit. And uh, he's like, you think they're going to start fighting here, but no, no man's here to learn from him. He's like, let's be friends. I kind of like the cut of your jib, guy. Yeah, Nomad's like, you know what? I've been doing a lot of thinking. I think you're right. Life is meaningless. <laughs> it's all just random yeah. bullshit. Why are we even trying, you know? And uh, Madcap's like, hey, pretty cool, buddy. I'm glad you're uh, seeing the light. And Madcap just starts uh, undressing in front of him. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what he thought was going to happen, but uh, yeah, right away the shirt comes off. And this is Nomad's actual plan. He just wanted to see this guy without a shirt on. <laughs> but yeah, Nomad's just saying, "Hey, I want to, I want to follow you around, see how you live. I want to learn from you. You know, I want to, yeah. I want to practice this philosophy of yours." And <laughs> man, I, I'm just fascinated by the the uh, decorations in Nomad or uh, 
Madcap's little shack. Yeah, I guess they're, you know, I guess they're random. Because <laughs> <laughs> on the one page in the top left corner, uh, the panel in the top left for Nomads in a Chair, and he says, I've come to the conclusion, I agree with you. Right beneath that word bubble, it looks like a picture of Ed Grimley. Yeah, um, a little bit. <laughs> and Madcap has pictures like a couple inches off the ground. <laughs> like they're not, <laughs> they're not at eye level or anything, so that's odd. But uh, I guess to keep him with the theme of just life is random, and so is his apartment. <laughs> now, there's a very good reason why Madcap has this life philosophy, and Nomad yeah. notices some uh, press clippings pinned to the wall, and he starts reading it. And the uh, first uh, headline there is tragic bus truck collision leaves 42 dead, one survivor. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, why don't you uh, tell the story there, Jack? Uh, well, apparently kind of like the movie Unbreakable. Yeah, that's uh, what I thought of, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a uh, – so uh, Madcap, whoever he was, he doesn't say his name here, but he used to be a very normal person, uh, like very religious, and his, his church group was on like a field trip. They were going to Bear Mountain, uh, and his parents were aboard this bus, and his sister, and uh, they're all singing songs, having a great old time in this bus, going to uh, Bear Mountain for this field trip. And uh, all of a sudden, this bus full of chemicals comes and crashes into them. Well, truck and full of chemicals. Hits yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And there's big collision, explosions, you know, chemicals everywhere, and everyone dies except for this guy, Madcap, who's thrown, I guess, far enough away, and just the chemicals kind of uh, start seeping into him. And, yeah, he, uh, he, like, lands in a puddle of these chemicals. Yeah. And they weren't he's just normal like, chemicals, though, Jank. Whose chemicals no. were they? <laughs> well, it turns out he sees a bunch of people in funny yellow beekeeper-type outfits. Yeah. And uh, so we realize, oh, shit, it was AIM. These were AIM's chemicals that they were transporting. And uh, this is some kind of secret, you know, compound X07 that they were working on. So that kind of explains why he gets these crazy powers. Um, so he wakes up in the hospital and he just wants to know, you know, like, hey, what happened to everybody else in the bus? And they're just like, yeah, everyone died except for you. And uh, he just kind of, you know, he starts crying and he's laughing at just how you know ridiculous this his life has become. And uh, he's like, well, screw this, I'm gonna go kill myself. <laughs> I want to be with my family. So he just jumps in front of a car in the street. And, uh, just like a bumble just kind of bounces and, uh, he's just perfectly fine. So he's like, oh crap. Like, why did I benefit from this thing when, you know, everyone else died? This is, this is insane. This is ridiculous and random. So that kind of, you know, set him on his current course where he's just like, yeah, like the answer to that question occurred to me a few days later. No reason at all. Things just happen. That's all without cause or effect. For no real reason, I decided to tell others the great truth I discovered. So yeah, he went to a costume shop, stole a costume, and yeah. he became looks like he bought just stole multiple costumes and mashed them together. But <laughs> and, and he became Madcap. Yeah, so about that. And That's pretty good. It's not bad. Yeah, it's a hell of a backstory. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure M Night Shyamalan probably just ripped it off when he did Unbreakable. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And then Nomad asks him where he got that crazy uh, bubble gun. And he says, mm -hmm. my fun gun, I bought it at Woolworths. A buck forty nine it cost me. <laughs> and he, he's like, now if you'll excuse me, I need to get some sleep. I've got a full day of foo for raw ahead of me. <laughs> I'm not familiar with that term. Foo for raw. No. Yeah. No, that's a new one for me. And he tells uh, Nomad, you can sleep on the chair if you want. So. <laughs> and Nomad sure does it. Like, you think he'd come back, you know, in the morning, but no. Nope. He's just going to stay there and watch this guy sleep. <laughs> like a creep. <laughs> yeah, like Nomad, when he first shows up, Nomad's just sitting in the chair with his arms on each on each hand rest, his feet flat in front of him. <laughs> and that's how he sleeps as well. He just... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They apparently did not get rid of all the crazy when they, uh, you know, cured him of his madness. <laughs> and uh, he's like, hey, aren't you scared of having me a stranger in your house while you're sleeping? And he's like, oh, I'm not afraid you'll kill me in my sleep, if that's what you mean. <laughs> so what if he did something else to you in your sleep? Would you be worried about that? What if he's like taking pictures of your feet while you sleep and putting them <laughs> on the Internet? 
So, well, this is pre-internet, so I guess he didn't have to worry about it. <laughs> but now we cut to uh, Rikers Island, and we see this uh, bald dude in a prison cell, and he's like, man, if this door wasn't electrified, I could sure get out of here quick. And uh, But then uh, the Sidewinder pops up, and yeah. he says, hey, hey, Claus Voorhees, Jason's uncle. <laughs> My name is Sidewinder. I've come to free you, for I have need of you as the Cobra. Uh Oh. Then the next line, we see uh, County Fairgrounds in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And uh, there's a good-looking lady here, Princess Python. And she's mad because someone comes in, and and this person's a mute, and he gives her her card. And she's like, oh, you can't talk, eh? And uh, accompany me, sign Death Adder. So, yeah, Death Adder's Mm -hmm. recruiting her. And she's like, hmm, I guess I'll follow you. <laughs> so she just leaves. <laughs> and now we cut to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Hey, oh, that sounds right. familiar. I am back here at the Shamrock Bar. Iron City, Iron City Beer. Beer, yeah. And uh, there's a guy, Frank Schlichting. Yeah. Like Frank Schlichting. Yeah, the constrictor. You knew that out right off the bat. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lady with weird, like, gills things on her face or something. And she says, hey, call me Anaconda, Pally. I got a proposition to make, assuming you, of course, are the constrictor. And he's like, and if I am, an associate of mine is looking to talk to you about some work. Interested? Might be. It's better to be good, girly. I'm one guy you don't want to cross. And she <laughs> says, remind me to get the shakes, bub. Yeah. yeah. So, so basically what we're seeing is the Serpent Society is recruiting. Yep. Yeah. Bring all, together, bring all the snake people together. Yeah, because Grunwald was big on the Serpent Society. That was a big thing. Oh boy, was he? Yeah. <laughs> and the, now they were going to be in this new Captain America movie. Are they still in it or not? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember seeing them in the trailer. Because uh, you know Seth freaking Rollins of WWE fame, he was playing one of the Serpent Society people, like in an opening scene, like I think the cold, the cold open, maybe the action scene in there. But then I heard oh. that they they scrapped it all, so they did do massive reshoots. Yeah, from what I understand, was it just because the movie was bad, or like why did they do yep. all these? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a shame. I don't know. Yeah, people seem excited about the trailer. I don't know. I thought it just looked meh. I didn't even see it. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. All right. So uh, we see Steve Rogers now going into work on Monday morning because he's got to talk to his boss, Bennett Advertising Agency. And uh, he says, uh, hi there, uh, Mr. Bennett, Miss Donahoe, Donahue. <laughs> ah, Rogers, <laughs> aren't you the punctual one for once? Step into my office. And they have a chat. And uh, how does, this chat's a little weird because it seems like Steve would be going in there to say, you know what? I messed up. My bad. But it's actually it's jank. He uh, he basically comes to a, the realization that I hate advertising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was kind of weird. Like the guy's trying to give him the benefit of the doubt and be like, "Hey, well, you you know you botched it, but that's all right." He's like, "I think you're talented. Uh, your heart's just not in the work, it seems like. But I'll, I'm willing to give you another chance." And uh, so the, all of a sudden, Steve Rogers is like, uh, first, I'm sorry for any hardship I caused you. It was extremely important personal business that came up. I can't tell you anything more about it. Second, I think you're right. After all these months, I've never fully gotten my head into the advertising business. I know that advertising plays an important role in America's free enterprise <laughs> system, but I can't escape this feeling that our promotion of material and things contributes to a consumer-oriented <laughs> society. One that places more value on possessions than people. Very natural to dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> just flows. Just flows. <laughs> that's how people talk. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Not at all like a textbook. <laughs> so that guy's like, what? You just told me my whole life and career is terrible. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> but I'll but still they- give you freelance work if you want it. And she's like, oh, no, you better give it to somebody that can show up and be reliable. <laughs> yeah. I just love the idea that Captain America's an advertising uh, art guy. <laughs> he's out yeah. saving the world. And he's worried about that toothpaste ad he's got to get back to. <laughs> <laughs> got to draw those cavity creeps. Who's going to make holes in teeth? Because I know the Red Skull isn't splitting his attention. You know, he's Red Skull 100% of the time. <laughs> he's, he's not working at Dairy Queen. 
<laughs> that would be pretty good. And his like manager is like an eighteen year old girl or something. <laughs> He's always <laughs> mad at her. This teenager bossing him around. <laughs> You're lucky I don't have my cigarette. I blow that smoke in your face. <laughs> no, but anyway. <laughs> So yeah, he decides, uh, he, he shakes his boss's hand and they part on good terms, but he just leaves and he's, he's ecstatic. He's free. He feels great. You know, you know, less than 20 or 48 hours ago, he was, uh, really sad and worried about losing the job. But now yeah. he just feels great. Now he's got no job. His girlfriend's got no job. <laughs> uh, A lot of unemployment going around. There's only one thing on his mind now. Where is Jack Monroe? <laughs> I gotta find out where <laughs> Jack Monroe is. So he starts making phone calls. He calls his buddy Sam, the old Falcon, and he's like, yeah, I haven't seen him. And then he calls up Nick Fury, and uh, he's like, hey, have you seen uh, Jack Monroe? <laughs> because <laughs> I, guess, uh, I guess he thought maybe he was doing a job for Nick Fury or something. And yeah. Fury's, Fury's like, nah, we quit hiring freelancers like you. We're, we're not doing this anymore. So uh, then he says, oh, well, I guess Jack will pop up. You know what? I need I need to go exercise. So... He goes to Avengers Mansion to get in a workout. But before yeah. that, he cut back to uh, Madcap and Nomad, and they're waking up. And Madcap's stretching in the bed there. And uh, old Nomad slept in that Still chair. That chair. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's stretching out his back. <laughs> he's all sore. And uh, they're like, hey, so what are we going to do today there, buddy? And uh, Madcap says, well, first put these on. And he throws them some clothes. And, uh, this is, he just wants to see him get naked in front of him, I guess, is what's happening here. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but Nomad's like, well, if I take, a, if I put these clothes on, he's going to see my face. He's going to see who I really am. Yeah, uh, because you're world famous there, Jack Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, clearly he doesn't care by later on when he's just wearing like sunglasses and a trench coat. But he puts the uh, clothes on there and he's following his buddy Madcap. They're going to go get some breakfast. But now we cut back to Avengers Mansion and we see uh, Steve Rogers on the uh, what? What are them deals called? The uh, yeah, the rings. Yeah, uh, the rings. I don't like his out? form though. I think he's going to separate some shoulders if he's doing it like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Arms slowly behind himself. Yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> but Jarvis comes in with a snack for him, and it's his favorite. What's his favorite thing to eat, Jank? <laughs> I brought your favorite American cheese on whole wheat with a glass of milk. He's a Captain America. He has to have American cheese. <laughs> yeah, what if it's Swiss cheese, huh? No oh, meat, man. just cheese. Just a cheese sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Norm yeah, McDonald will really have got him so easily with those cheese sandwiches. <laughs> a big glass of milk. So, uh. But then Jarvis says, hey, your buddy uh, Nomad was here the other day. He wanted to go through some archives here at the uh, mansion. And uh, Wasp gave him permission, that Wasp, you know. And uh, and he said, then he asked me if I was a, a goofy, crazy guy, where would I like to hang out? <laughs> and Jarvis says, oh, probably down at the old amusement park. That's where I'd go, you know. And so Steve Rogers is like, hey, thanks, Jarvis. I'm going to go down to the amusement park. And <laughs> So now he le oh, and he says, I'll see you on the meet at the meeting Saturday. Now, do you think that's an Avengers meeting or an AA meeting? What do you think it's talking about? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe he's addicted to milk. <laughs> so, all right, now we come back to Madcap and uh, Nomad, and they dine and dash. Yeah. They breakfast, and they run up. But what is Nomad <laughs> thinking? And, and for some reason, uh, Madcap gave Nomad like a really thick wool turtleneck sweater to wear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty dorky. I like it. Uh, but Nomad's like, well, I did it. I actually committed a crime hanging out with Madcap. I'll go back and settle accounts later. So he's going to go back and pay the check eventually. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm sure he is. I was undercover. <laughs> yeah, there's no way he goes back and pays that bill, right? There's no way. He's Yeah, I doubt it. He forgot all about it by now. He's not really going to have to go to that diner again. So they go back to the shack and they change into their superhero outfits. And uh, they're heading out in the town. And they're just going to cause trouble. Yep. And Mad Madcap sees a lady pushing a stroller with her two little babies in it. And he says, oh, here's the lady I can mess up. And he shoots her at the bubbles. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It doesn't look like she even looks at him at all, you know, but... Uh, 
Yeah, that's true. She does not look over. He's just shooting her from the side. But he makes her loopy, and she starts racing the stroller like it's a race car, like zipping through the town, knocking people over. And, and Nomad's <laughs> like, oh, i got to protect these kids. So he grabs the stroller there, and he just, I'll just sit it over here. And she's off jump, jumping around and dancing like a crazy lady. And uh, Madcap is still, he's up on light poles, shooting his bubbles at people, making them all go crazy. And and what does Nomad do, Jank? Uh, so he, he tackles them from behind. Um, and he's like, I can't let him endanger others. And he grabs the fun gun and he's like, I'm going to turn this against you. Yeah. And he uses it against Madcap and is shocked to discover it doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. His theory was that if uh, he's already crazy, if I hit him with the bubbles, they'll make him sane. Yep. I, I would think it would just make him more crazy. <laughs> yeah, unless there's like an overload where you're just so crazy you shut down or something. Maybe that would happen. But yeah, if he said he got it at Woolworth for a dollar forty nine, what did you expect was going to happen? Clearly, the power's well, not in the gun. <laughs> but I guess the uh, he thinks, and I thought this at the time that the uh, the bubble, the soap bubble liquid, was the powerful thing. Here. Oh, I get you. So like like you know the way, and keep in mind this Jack Monroe, he grew up in a world where you can make super soldier serum in your basement. So yeah. <laughs> he probably thought Madcap concocted some little uh, secret serum to put in the gun. But uh, he's like, yeah, it's doing nothing. So now uh, Nomad runs off into the amusement park, and he's going to the roller coaster. And uh, Madcap's just prancing after him. And he's saying, inky dinky parlez-vous, come back here, you rascal, you. tra la he he ta ra ra boom <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Blows right off the tongue. And so Nomad, for some reason, he starts scaling the outside of a roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> like King Kong. Smart move. I think he's just like stalling for time, I guess. Yeah. Why, though? He's like, stronger than him, but I, I can't really hurt him, and I can't even knock him out, so I don't know what to do. So what I'm going to do is climb to a very tall roller coaster. <laughs> like, Where I can definitely be hurt if I fall off, but he won't. <laughs> Everything that happens at the top of the roller coaster could have easily happened at the bottom of it, like in front of the roller coaster yeah. on the ground. Like, there's no reason to climb up there. <laughs> no. But uh, he does. And uh, Captain America shows up at the amusement park just as this is happening. And he sees Nomad up there. And he's like, oh, I better go help Nomad. But he's like, you know what? No, I'm just going to stay here. Because <laughs> even though I've been really worried about Nomad this past week and even more more concerned with him than having sex with my girlfriend or my job or anything. Now that I'm here and I can see that he could be in trouble, I'm just going to stand here and watch because once the sea nomad, <laughs> that's all I ever wanted. <laughs> but he's like, lovely, I want to see where he's at in his crime fighting career. If he can handle this on his own, let's see how this plays out. And he's in the shadows like a dirty cup. <laughs> so, <laughs> so mad cow climbs up to the top of the, uh, Roller coaster, and they're both standing on the tracks there. And Nomad says, "Hey, Madcap, get a load of this!" And he just crushes the plastic work on. Yeah. And, and Madcap's like, "Hey, that cost me a buck forty-nine, you jerk!" You know, they're not free. And uh, he goes running at him, and he tackles Nomad. And and he says, "Hey, Nomad, what you don't realize is it's not the gun or the bubbles; it's me." And he just stares at Nomad, trying to hypnotize him. And Nomad feels it's starting to work, so he uh, he turns away. And what does he do then, Jack? <laughs> um, so he grabs his cape. Nomad grabs his own cape, wraps it around Madcap's face, blocking his, you know, hypno vision. And uh, Madcap kind of lashes out, kicks Nomad in the face. Looks like it pretty much cracks his jaws. It's, like, <laughs> it's really a hell of a kick. Yeah. Hell of yeah. Kick. <laughs> he goes flying over the railing and, like, is falling. And uh, Captain America's like, oh, crap, I shouldn't have let no man do this by himself. He's going to die now. My beloved Jack. <laughs> but uh, Jack finds, like, a sign that's hanging out, like the sign that has the name of the roller coaster. He grabs onto that and just kind of does, like, a little gymnastics flip and shoots himself back up there. Yeah, how well, convenient. <laughs> All worked out. It's like how there's always awnings whenever you fall out of a building. But how great would it be if Captain America shows up there and just watches Jack fall to his death? That would have been amazing. 
<laughs> but no matter, like you said, swings back up and, and he captures uh, Madcap in a leg scissors, like Kevin yeah. Von Eric. And he uh, <laughs> squeezing him. And Cap's like, oh, I knew Jack could do it. Bravo, Nomad. <laughs> this Cap loves them. Find someone that looks at you the way Cap looks at Nomad. That's <laughs> true. Loves Nomad. <laughs> so then Nomad, uh, he he is he's a little concerned for Madcap. He's like, I know this guy can't get hurt or die or anything, but I, I wonder if he can suffocate because my cape is wrapped around his head pretty tight. And <laughs> then he takes off Madcap's cape. And he uses that cape to tie yeah. up Madcap's wrists Find and ankles. Yeah. yeah. And then he just chucks him on his shoulder and he's walking down the roller coaster with him. And now Captain America can show up. And yep. He could have just waited for him, but he show up to take credit and be like, oh, no, man, you go stand over there while the press and use me. Yeah, like he could have, uh, you know, just waited for Nomad to come down, but like Cap's walking up the roller coaster too. You know? <laughs> Like, he's on the track there, and he meets him. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, we get a shot of uh, Madcap's ass as uh, <laughs> he's on Nomad's shoulder, and Nomad's cupping his ass gently with his right hand. Not and, America's ass, though. That's, <laughs> that belongs to Captain America. <laughs> Captain America says, I always knew you had it in you. Come on, let's go celebrate. Milk and cheese sandwiches for all around. <laughs> let's go. And Nomad's <laughs> like, uh, hold on another minute, Cap. I'm really glad we're, uh, you're here to see this. It makes what I have to say a bit easier. And, uh, it's what a, what a, a tearful moment this is. <laughs> what does Nomad tell Captain America, Jack? Yeah. Lately it occurred to me that it might be for the best if we, uh, broke up our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Cap. You're the greatest teacher and novice crime fighter like, like me could have. But you tend to to take in charge of every situation you're in. As a result, a partner of yours might never really learn to be self-reliant. Take the initiative. What I'm saying is I feel like I'm living in your shadow, Cap. I even had this weird vision that I was merging my identity with yours. See Captain America 307. He had a dream of having sex with Captain America. <laughs> but basically, he's just like, Cap, it, it's uh, it's not you, it's me. You know, I got to get out. Yeah. It's, this relationship's not working. I got to get out of here. <laughs> I'm going to go to Wisconsin and be a lawyer, too. <laughs> Everyone wants to get away from you. <laughs> Poor Cap. <laughs> and the the way this conversation is depicted, they're, like, walking off, uh, and we see them from behind, and we just see, like, their shadow silhouetted against the blue sky. And then in the final panel, we see Nomad separating. They shake hands, and then he walks away on his own. And he says, I'm going to leave town and finally live up to the name Nomad. Yeah. You, at least we'll get a beer with Captain America from the first. <laughs> well, he doesn't. He's going to get milk. Really dip. You know, and no <laughs> one wants to go to a bar and order milk. So he's like, no. It's a Star Wars bar. <laughs> <laughs> so there he is, Captain know. America 309. Madcap and Nomad. I like uh, Madcap's great, you know. Yeah, he's pretty fun. His backstory is awesome. That is a... This is what I mean when, uh, of course, uh, Grunwald didn't create him. There, J.M. DeMatteis did, right? Or no, no, no. Grunwald created Madcap. J.M. DeMatteis did the Nomad, the updated Nomad. I'm confusing yeah. the two, yeah. Um, <laughs> but this is what I meant when Grunwald's a big concept guy. Like, that's just a wonderful backstory, you know? Yep. And to have that philosophy about life and everything, it's uh, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. And then uh, the dialogue, though, and... Madcap's dialogue wasn't bad. Like, he yeah, his dialogue tells his tell- tell- commercials and stuff. Like, it was pretty random and fun. He was like rhyming, kind of like uh, Mr. Bones. <laughs> yeah, he was fine. But like, just the the plot points and because um, here's the problem I had with this jank. So as we uh, <clears throat> nomad, his whole plan here was to find Madcap and get in on his good side by saying he wants to learn about his philosophy and then uh, pull the old switcheroo on them when they're out there and see, like I thought when you start reading the issue, I'm like, Oh, this is actually pretty cool. Nomad actually feels like this. He's actually wondering, because especially when you read his backstory and how confusing it all is, like you can understand how, yeah, he probably thinks that too, that life is all random. Like the Nazi parents and everything. So, 
<laughs> I'm like, so I thought, oh, he's genuinely buying into Madcap's philosophy. And then when they start going out on the town and uh, Madcap's, and then he comes to terms like, no, this is wrong. I'm a hero. But no, when he when they're out in the town, he's thinking to himself in his internal monologue that this is all going according to plan. That he's just, he just tricked Madcap, and he's going to grab him then when he can. Well, here's a crazy idea. You slept with him. <laughs> right. <laughs> Madcap was like, a, he was like, oh, he kept it. He kept the fun gun under his pillow, so I couldn't get that during the night. But you could have just tied him up Madcap. Yes. <laughs> and moved him and took the gun. <laughs> I don't understand. Like, it, it would have been so much better if he legitimately bought into the philosophy for a bit. And like, and then realize, no, I'm a hero. I can't be this. I have to believe in something and let's go. But no, so it just undercut everything. And yeah, a little bit. It really, it really sucked. And like, there's no reason for them to climb the, the roller coaster. Uh, why would Captain America just go and then watch? <laughs> That's just <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, like we said, even Cap's uh, 180 there at his uh, office. Because, like, we're we're leading up into, like, we're getting a lot of conflict there, Cap and his boss, and, oh, how, what's going to happen to him at work? And then you then he gets there, and you're like, oh, Cap doesn't give a damn about this job anyway, so who cares? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, he must have been fretting over this all weekend, but no, he's just like, yeah, yeah I don't really like advertising anyway. Yeah. Man, that, that must have been some really uh, uh, supercharged smooch in there from Bernie. It just uh, knocked <laughs> all his love for his work right out of him. But yeah. So, yeah, and and how do you feel about Nomad as a character? Um, you know what? I didn't get a great read on him here. He seems like a decent enough dude. I mean, he wants to go back and settle up with that diner owner that they ripped <laughs> off. So that's, He's that's not nice. going back there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, not the brightest, and that he could have taken <laughs> Madcap down or a lot earlier, but uh. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. We didn't get to see much of their their relationships, I guess. So. <laughs> I would like end. him so much more if he genuinely bought into Madcap's philosophy. Okay. I, yeah. Their, I mean, I, I think I definitely would have. I would have been like, all right, this guy makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, he would have had so much more depth as a character. But then uh, we find out, nah, he's, he's just a dummy. <laughs> this guy's just a dummy. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, I'm not a fan of Nomad, and the costume's terrible. But, um, <laughs> and I don't know. This, yeah, this, de- pretty cool this depiction of Captain America, I'm not really fond of either. He just seems like a, a lightweight. Like, uh, <laughs> not a real... Well, we didn't see him in action here. He's just kind of, you know, letting Nomad do his but, thing. Yeah, so. he's, 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 he's worried about losing his job there. He's terrified, and then... Uh, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah, Captain America having like a regular life is one that never really made a lot of sense to me. Eating cheese sandwiches, drinking milk. I mean, that's cute and all, but I don't know. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and he's still using the name Steve Rogers. How does nobody realize he's Captain America? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, he's a Steve Rogers, not the Steve Rogers. Like, oh, okay. I'm not the computer guy, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But I mean, there are pictures of him theoretically from back in the day. <laughs> I will say uh, that is becoming a problem. The more I uh, get my writing career rolling here is that I have the same name as that computer guy. Because yeah. if you get the monkey flip audio book, like when you pan down, it says uh, more from this narrator. And it's got books by that computer guy. Oh, so, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's not. <laughs> you have to be Michael P. Dell. Yeah. I might just go with a whole new pen name. Maybe. Uh... Cool. <laughs> To come up with something. She's the uh, Sebastian Winthrop. <laughs> I'll be, yeah. I'll be Ed Miller. It's his own autobiographies. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, anything else about this issue, Jeff? Uh, the art I thought was kind of unremarkable. Not, not yeah. terrible by any stretch, but nothing to write home about either. I agree. Um, some of the panels were a little weird. Like I, I remember early on in the, uh, when the greasers were trying to fight Madcap, there's one panel that stuck out to me where the guy turns and he says, let's get him. But the the way that panel, it's like, we just see that guy from the side in his ear and he's like looking back and there's no reason to do a panel like that. Like why not have him looking at the camera? And so we can see the anger in his face, you know, like a Jack Kirby, like, ah, but uh, yeah, so it, it's okay. Nothing, 
nothing awful, but nothing really great either. It's just it's a good, good yeah. professional work, but nothing to stand out about it or anything. Matt Cap does look pretty cool. I like the way he draws the the eyes getting bigger and smaller. The, that came out pretty nice, but for the most part, nothing nothing too spectacular. So, what do you think? One out of ten here for old uh, Captain America. Well, I, I, this was fun, so I think I'll give it like a six. Yeah, I almost went higher, but yeah, six seems right. Yeah. So I did like Mad Cap yeah, and his backstory. Captain America's life a little bit, but <laughs> the rest of it was pretty fun. Got to learn about Bernie Rosenthal. Yeah, who knew? Yeah. He was like, love of my life. I was like, what, for like two seconds? <laughs> yes. But apparently, no. He was around for a little, a little while. Who knew? Yeah. So, all right. <clears throat> That's... uh. Captain America. So for next week, it's back to me. And uh, forgive me, I'm picking another DC book. I, I can't help myself. Just uh, <laughs> smitten. Yeah. I mentioned this in passing a few months back, and I, I found out about this uh, series when we did Zatanna because she appeared in one of these issues. But we're going to be doing DC Superstars issue ten from 1976. This one in, was an anthology series. And uh, it's superstars with a hyphen between super and stars. So when you're searching for it. Link for this one? Yeah. (laughs) And uh, this story in particular, the reason I picked this one is because uh, it's summer, Jank, you know? And we just had the Major League Baseball All-Star game like last week or something. So we're right in the middle of baseball season. And in this issue, we get a baseball game between uh, nine DC superheroes and nine DC villains. Whoa, really? <laughs> yes, it's like <laughs> Superman and Wonder Woman and everybody against like Lex Luthor and the Joker. <laughs> They're playing baseball. <laughs> <laughs> that is so ridiculous. Oh, my God. I guess the premise is the Huntress and uh, whatever guy she was with at the time. Um, They were having an argument about whether she should still be a criminal or go straight or whatever. And he says, you know what? Let's have a baseball game. <laughs> and if... <laughs> And if the heroes win, you can be a hero. But if the villains win, you stay a villain. Something. Wow. So I I was like, we got to read this. Now, this book is very large uh, because the the main story is long, but it's like an anthology, a giant sized anthology. So there's like two or three other stories after. Just read the baseball story. Okay. Yeah, that's all we need. Yeah. That's the important stuff. So. That sounds amazing. Yeah. It should be very odd. So. Yeah. Have you ever wanted to? See, I wonder what. You know, the best thing I didn't read it to it in much detail yet, but after the uh, the baseball story, there's like a uh, summary of the game where they break down how all the runs were scored, and there's a box score. So I'm very interested to see what position the Joker played. <laughs> oh man! Like, what do you say? So many options. Superman <laughs> was pitching. How did they get any hits off Superman? <laughs> Like, <laughs> that makes no sense. Yeah, maybe Reverse Flash could do it, but that's about it. <laughs> and, like, the final score is something like uh, 13-12 or something like that. There's a lot of runs scored. Oh, this will be fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's next week here on the big show. <laughs> DC Superstars Issue 10 for 1976. And uh, once again, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. We appreciate the support. And go buy Monkey Flip. So mm-hmm. until next week, don't get any jank on you. <laughs>